biggest mistake turkey hunters make. And we start now. <laughs> What's going on with you? My name is Steve with STO Wildlife Calls. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, glad to have you. If you want to learn more about do-it-yourself hunting projects and crossbow hunting, start today by subscribing and click the bell and you will keep up to date. In no particular order, I'm going to give you some of the biggest mistakes that turkey hunters make when they're out turkey spring gobbler hunting. Using only one type of call. That could be a slate call, a glass call, a box call, mouth call. They use it day after day after day, setting in the same area throughout the season. You need to probably switch off and use a different call if you're not getting any response. So if you've been using a sleet call and you're sitting out there day after day and nothing's working and this is the only call you've been using you might want to take something else along with you tomorrow or the next time you get out and switch up because a mouth call is going to sound different than the sleet call box call is going to sound different than the mouth call in the sleet call and you the biggest thing that a lot of fellas aren't using some are starting to use is a tube type call so, you need to switch up your calls. And along that line is hunters call too loud. Calling loud is fine if you're trying to locate a gobbler. But once you know where he's at and you sit down at a tree and start working him, you need to tone your calls down because he knows where you're at. He knows within feet of where you're at. So remember, whether you're using a box call, a slate call, mouth call, tone down your sounds as the gobbler works closer to you. He's not hard of hearing. Another big mistake that a lot of fellows make is not staying still. So you sit up against a tree, get yourself comfortable. Most turkey call vests have seats on them, have a nice padded seat. If they don't, there's foam seats out there you can get one inch two inch thick, some of them are even three inches thick. Use that. Make yourself comfortable so you're not moving, fidgeting around. Don't do the hand movements if you're also along those lines. If you're taking a mentor or a child with you hunting, and I know from experience, they like to uh, fall asleep, get awake, throw their arms up in the air, etc. The best thing there you can do is get yourself a ground blind. They can move all they want pretty much as long as you keep them away from that window and the turkey's not going to catch their movement. Now if you're in a ground blind with a child you still need to be some careful and so forth when you're depends how close you are to that window and what how you're dressed inside if you're hunting in a ground blind put black on black sweatshirt black hat black gloves black face mask because all the insides of ground blinds are black don't sit in there in your camo like i am standing here talking to you because that'll stick out 
if you're outside looking in at me you're going to see me easier than if you come up past my ground blind and I'm sitting in there in black all face mask and everything like that I blend in better another big mistake is not staying on your setup longer and what I mean by that is you've been working a bird and for some reason the gobbler went silent and you decide well I don't know where he went don't know what happened to him I pack up my stuff and I go to stand up and whoosh there goes the gobbler he was sneaking in on you so when you think you've been there long enough you haven't heard the bird or anything you might want to stay another 30 minutes don't you don't need to do any calling just sit there watch and listen and don't do any quick movements because that gobbler might be sneaking in on you could even be coming in behind you because like I said he knows where you're at another mistake fellas make is they leave the woods too soon and what I mean by that is yes if if you have to go to work but you were able to get out and get in some uh, hunting time you're going to have to leave there's no doubt about it but if whatever day off you have whether it be through the week or on a Saturday or something and a lot of fellas leave the woods by nine o'clock I've killed a lot of birds after nine o'clock I've killed birds right up till noon already and in Pennsylvania now with the second half of our season you can hunt all day so hang in there stay in the woods as long as you can and you'll have more success I hope these few tips help you in the upcoming season our turkey season here in Pennsylvania uh, starts April 28th we're about two and a half weeks out the junior sea hunt is uh, Saturday the 21st so be careful and have a great season so if you want to learn more on DIY hunting projects and crossbow hunting start today by hitting the round icon subscribe button and you will keep up to date thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time